Hello, I'm Grayson Ottaway. Welcome back. This is Marvelous Videos. Barbarella, the list of films that were ignored by critics or that simply underperformed at the box office when they were originally released and then saw a renaissance and newfound acclaim years later is as extensive as it is notable. A handful of the now celebrated movies that seemed destined for obscurity on their initial releases are The Wizard of Oz, Blade Runner and It's a Wonderful Life. There are also films like Barbarella, the 1968 psychedelic sci-fi meets Marvel has aged fairly nicely for such an odd production, even though it doesn't quite merit the praise given to true classics. Nobody in their sane mind would ever describe Barbarella as excellent, but decades after it was shown to a puzzled public, it feels like a film that, if it were released now, would be very well received and praised for its gaudy retro stylings or its warm evocation of late 60s camp or anything. Before we go into our explanation, of Barbarella, very small request. If you like us, please support us by subscribing to this channel. Small click for you, but for us, it means a great deal. Thank you so much. You ready? Let's go. Exploring the super entertaining plot in detail, Barbarella will likely remain a pop culture curiosity for all time. Whether you like it or don't, very few people would admit to openly detesting it, but not because it's a misunderstood auteur gem or because the movie was ahead of its time, but for one and only one reason, Jane Fonda. The 30-year-old Fonda provides a playful, seductive and self-assured portrayal as a 40 first century astronautical aviatrix and queen of the galaxy, in other words. She seems to be having fun in the uniquely ludicrous character, with its even more bizarre clothing and preposterous story twists. It appears that in the future, people would dress in revealing, unpleasant and frequently hard plastic, and that evil villains will occasionally try to defeat their foes through mechanically caused and brutally heart-stopping orgasms. After all, she had acted alongside Robert Redford in popular comedies like Barefoot in the Park and Cat Baloo by 1968. She would soon be receiving significant film awards, such as the New York Film Critics Circle Award for They Shoot Horses, Don't They, 1969, and for Clute, 1971. Of course, she would also receive the first of her two Best Actress Oscars for the latter. After Barbarella, Fonda would become a political lightning rod for her anti-Vietnam activism. She would earn the enduring resentment of numerous veterans with a highly contentious trip to Vietnam in 1972 that earned her the moniker, or badge of dishonor depending on one's perspective, Hanoi Jane. She would later wed the well-known political activist of the 60s, Tom Hayden, and Captain Outrageous himself, Ted Turner, and would remain always a vocal advocate for progressive causes. In short, she would lead, and she still does lead, an absolutely amazing American existence. In the meantime, Barbarella, a cult classic and a shining example of a genre that, regrettably, has seen far too few entries recently, futuristic, goofy erotica continues to lead its own, only somewhat less spectacular life. Even if it didn't win its young star any accolades, people continue to watch it today, and many of those viewers appreciate it in a sincere, ironic, free manner. There is nothing improper about that. When it comes to powerful representations of female characters, science fiction has been viewed as a leveling force in the movie industry. Favorite genres like Alien and The Terminator each have their own Sarah Connor and Ripley, the powerful and assertive women of blockbuster hits, however take on a prescient and postmodern twist and sci ancient fies and new subgenres respectively. Two of these movies, Barbarella and Under the Skin, reevaluate the position of women in science fiction films in dramatically different aesthetic ways. Nevertheless, they both reevaluate the assumptions that the genre and in fact all of the films had established for women through an erotic lens. It's challenging to claim that in 1968 its release is explicitly feminine 
feminist when considering Barbarella as a pivotal movie in the process of women obtaining equal positions as science fiction heroes. In reality, it makes no attempt to challenge the man gaze that largely governs how women are portrayed in movies. Jane Fonda, who was then married to director Roger Vadim, is portrayed by Claude Renoir and Roger Vadim in the titular role with a lustful eye. Without any objectivity, Fonda is captured in Jacques Fonteray's now retro-futurist skimpy clothes and frequently out of them. Through her innocent misinterpretation of the traditional method of making love on a world other than Earth, where physical pleasure is limited to popping a pill and pressing your palms together, the character of Barbarella depicts naive eroticism. However, Barbarella is an early female sci-fi protagonist on the road to parity due to her unrestricted eroticism, which may be more influenced by ordinary male desire than the erotic agency of the women's movement. Barbarella is not a bygone, obnoxious byproduct of an even more patriarchal society, but rather remains a significant element of the legacy of depicting more empowered women in science fiction films, retaining value beyond a predatory pop culture product like others from its time. The movie doesn't redefine female eroticism subtly, but it moves closer to the postmodern mirror image of a film like Under the Skin, which likewise exploits a science fiction premise to make its point more outlandish and so more understandable. The extravagant model that Barbarella established was reconsidered by films like the aforementioned Alien, which was released 11 years later in 1979. It continued the history of male behind-the-camera talent, most frequently dictating the roles of women on screen by being directed by Ridley Scott. However, Alien connects the agency of its female heroine to issues that are bigger than life, placing it in a type of transitional time of perpetual change for the presence of women in sci-fi. The postmodern interpretations of this change, which are still frequently led by men, appear to prioritize the message, subsuming genre tropes into visible filmmaking processes and forms of communication, as opposed to the invisible style of Hollywood films, by using more straightforward aesthetics and low sci-fi settings. Here the word low sci-fi is used to denote sci-fi aspects in a book that otherwise closely resembles our reality, reflecting the term low fantasy for literature like the Harry Potter series. For instance, high sci-fi would represent Alien, which is set in a future with intergalactic travel, and high fantasy would represent the Lord of the Rings. The main character of Barbarella is initially shown performing a striptease while donning a normal astronaut suit as she travels to and from Earth in a spaceship. She gets a call from Earth's president, Claude Dauphin, who briefs her while she's completely naked about a scientist named Dr. Durand Durand, Milo O'Shea, who departed Earth after developing a weapon. This is significant because, as Barbarella points out, in its perfect society, guns are no longer required. Some action must be taken as she stands naked in front of the view screen that connects her to the president of the Earth, Barbarella says. He answers with a genuine, profound yes, and the girl who has to do it is you. Barbarella doesn't notice the president's interest since she doesn't notice much. She has an unwavering capacity for trust and a desire to please others, and as a result, she's frequently attacked and frequently betrayed. In her mission to stop the doctor's positronic beam, she sets off for the planet where Durand Durand has ostensibly left, crashes there, then enters a number of strange environments and adventures. Erotic adventures are a recurring theme in her interactions with the inhabitants of the alien world, all of whom appear to be humanoids, with one notable exception. Even though Barbarella frequently receives assistance from numerous male characters, her erotic prowess is frequently highlighted. Barbarella's distinctive science fiction environment could convey a different message regarding Barbarella's eroticism. She doesn't have any preconceived ideas about erotic closeness in this magical world. In fact, when her first male conquest approaches her with the idea, 
she's actually hesitant. She attempts to make friends with two young girls as soon as she lands in the Tau Siti region, but they knock her out with a snowball before putting nasty vampire dolls on her. A hairy-chested, fur-clad, virulent man saves her and tells her outright that he wants to make love to her, but Barbarella is too naive even for that. They establish a relationship by ingesting exaltation transference pellets in the future on Earth, but learning the traditional way doesn't tarnish her. If anything, it makes makes her more impenetrably pure. After saving Barbarella, Mark Hand, Ugo Tognazzi, makes a quick, brash and oddly courteous request to make love that reflects typical overwrought masculine dominance. However, Barbarella's choice to give it a try is not coerced, rather it is shown as an odd alien sensation, similar to how supernatural powers are portrayed in other sci-fi movies. After the erotic encounter, she hums and sings carelessly, noticing with contented puzzlement that the ancients were correct, getting intimate really is diverting. As a result, for the remainder of the movie, Barbarella relies heavily on physical intimacy after learning that she enjoys it. Bonnie Noonan is dismissing the movie as a series of erotic sequences taking place in a succession of visually amazing locations, actually nailing the significance of Barbarella's status as a widely distributed Hollywood production. 91. Then Barbarella turns to intercourse as a remedy for both her own issues and those of others. Barbarella meets Pygar, John Philip Law, a blind angel who has lost the will to fly after she crash lands in the underground labyrinth, which leads to the city of Sogo. She engages in an erotic activity with the angel freely, giving him the motivation he needs to resume flying. When Pygar is able to fly, he brings Barbarella to Sogo, where they use standard sci-fi laser guns to battle the city's guards in the air. Although Barbarella uses weaponry to overcome this challenge, her erotic prowess served as the catalyst for the plot point. She exploits her body to exert physical dominance over males, which is the opposite of what happens to most genre women. When Barbarella declines to get frisky, she loses control. The Black Queen, also known as the Great Tyrant of Sogo, Anita Pallenberg, tries to entice beautiful gorgeous, our heroine, to play with her in a not-so-subtle almost homoerotic encounter. However, Barbarella ends up in captivity since she refuses to play. The logic that underlies most of the rest of Barbarella is flawed when it causes bad things to happen to our protagonist because she doesn't even engage in physical contact, which also serves to emphasize the heteroerotic focus of the novel. Thanks to a resistance organization in Sogo that is led by a man by the name of Dildano, Barbarella is saved from being killed by by bird torture, David Hemmings. Ironically, he's one of the few prominent men Barbarella meets who's interested in having physical relationships with her. He interrupts her, though, and declares that he prefers to go about things the Earth way. While this desire for Barbarella is not typically erotic in nature, the interaction between the two is undeniably charged in the literal sense. Dildano's hand begins to smoke as a result of their contact, and both Barbarella and his hair stand on end. Their facial acrobatics and final orgasmic moments, all the way up to Dildano's final groan before he awakens from his tantric trance, provide additional evidence of an erotic experience. Like Mark Hand did for her earlier in the movie, Barbarella serves as a conduit for an alien experience in this scene, giving the lead character her agency back after being rendered helpless in a potentially gay encounter. Most significantly for its science fiction setting, Barbarella's eventual victory is over technology. After being abducted by Durand Durand once more, she's put through the excessive pleasure machine, which is a piano-like device that the bad guy plays with keys. Although Barbarella admits that the torture feels somewhat pleasant, the device's purpose is to murder its victims with pleasure. Barbarella's feminine eroticism, on the other hand, actually tears down the cold, impersonal pleasure of future technology as she sweats and writhes in overt, stereotypically female orgasmic behavior. In Barbarella, however, the lady is not with her lover. 
instead of the enigmatic orgasm communicates by the woman who submits to its influence. The woman is able to completely give in to the orgasm's wants of her partner isn't there. Creed 146. As implied by Creed's statement, Barbarella's experience with the excessive pleasure machine illustrates a woman's capacity to have an erotic climax without a partner, i.e. a man, a stereotyped fear of male lovers. It's the film's most audacious subversion, and the circumstance manages to rank as Barbarella's single silliest sequence. It frequently serves as the benchmark for contemporary coverage of the movie. But it's challenging to identify Barbarella's overarching thematic focus. Its symbolic imagery and the ideas it is intended to convey are scattered throughout. Barbarella is largely incoherent as far as adopting an ideological stance or assuming a certain point of view. Noonan 91. Noonan draws attention to the contradictions between Barbarella's proclamation of her loathing for weapons and her actual usage of them. Another example is Pygar saving both the solely good Barbarella and the solely wicked Black Queen. In contrast to the supposedly amazing liberated coitus of Earth, Barbarella Barbarella seems to favour traditional intercourse. It physically curls her hair. Noonan, 91. The triumph of a erotic woman over the actual machinations of men, a concept shared with the late 1960s obsession with capital L, love, is perhaps the most important aspect of the main character's succession of erotic victories. Barbarella introduced the act of making love as a feasible premise for the science fiction cinema by capturing the erotic zeitgeist of the 60s so swiftly and so energetically. Noonan 92. Despite its predatory intentions, Barbarella's representation of a woman making progress and succeeding with her eroticity is where the gender revolution comes into play. Although by 19 in 1968, the attention had been focused almost exclusively on the female body. Barbarella's over-the-top erotic conqueror role was closer to parity with the role that males normally portrayed. The setting of this mantle in a science fantasy reality avoids the obsurrection that a real-world setting may use, and more clearly defines Barbarella's character to fit her unusual surroundings. Similar to how the debate is focused on pornographic performers and escort workers' autonomy, in the industry, Barbarella's erotic agency has received both praise and criticism in equal measure. By giving Barbarella a retrospective agency that reveals her to be more than a sci-fi soft, softcore porno, Fonda, a former symbol of eroticism, who became a feminist icon, reframes her titular character for the current era. Even though it is too hampered by the male gaze to triumphantly stand as a feminist work, it is still useful in illuminating the expanding roles for women in sci-fi. Barbarella, which gives a female character agency and marks a problematic but crucial evolution of how women are portrayed in science fiction and movies in general, for all its problematic elements, were rare. Marvelous Verdict, The Ideal Guilty Pleasure I believe that the first time that I saw this iconic example of psychedelic trash from the late 1960s, my curiosity in the strange and bizarre was piqued. Even though it's one of the funniest movies ever produced, this one is still really entertaining. History Lesson Before Radical Jane and Corporate Jane, Jane Fonda was at the height of her playboy kitten phase. In this film, she's never looked more beautiful and successfully captures Barbarella's innocent innocence. Even though her voice is dubbed Anita Pallenberg, Keith Richards' old woman and co-star of Performance, is magnificent as the great tyrant, and her few interactions with Fonda are unforgettable. Cult favourites are among the diverse supporting cast's remaining members. Pygar, the blind angel, played by John Philip Law, from Diabolic, Dildano, a revolutionary played by David Hemmings from Profondo Rosso, and Duran Duran, a rebellious earth scientist played by Milo O'Shea from Theatre of Blood. The doll attack sequence in Barbarella is one of my all-time favourite science fiction movie scenes, and the film features some of the most striking and weird images from the 1960s. It is a truly love-it-or-hate-it proposition, much like many of the more extravagant films of the 1960s. Of course, I adore it. 
and believe that it, Roger Corman's The Trip, and Russ Mayer's Faster Pussycat, Kill, Kill, are the three best 1960s trash classics. Definitely necessary viewing for any 1960s buffs, science fiction or otherwise. Long live Barbarella. Barbarella remake set to surprise the fans? Sydney Sweeney will once again be working with Sony Pictures on a project, this time executive producing and starring in a reimagining of the iconic science fiction movie Barbarella. Sweeney will star in the movie according to Deadline, which is purportedly in the early stages of production at Sony. Deadline was informed by sources that, aside from Sweeney, no other writers or producers have yet joined the project. The project will be based on the 1968 movie of the same name name, which in turn was based on a number of French comic books by Jean-Claude Forrest. However, not much further information has been made public. In the 1968 movie, Jane Fonda played Barbarella, a space adventurer from the year 41, who has been commanded to track down and kill the evil scientist Duran Duran, Milo O'Shea, who has developed a weapon to wipe out the human race. The 1968 original, which was directed by Roger Vadim, only made an estimated 2.5 million dollars at the box office that year. For its images of nudity and sensuality, the movie has subsequently gained notoriety. It has become something of a cult favourite amongst sci-fi lovers. The part of Barbarella will probably be played by Sweeney. The franchise would make its long-awaited comeback to the big screen if production goes according to plan. At Amazon Studios, a pre-production television series was apparently being shopped around in 2014, but the idea never materialised. Similar to the TV show, a feature-length adaptation was apparently planned for by director Robert Rodriguez in 2007 but it never materialised, although a musical adaptation of the movie, directed by Dave Stewart, debuted in 2004. Sweeney's next feature will mark Barbarella's return to the big screen for the very first time. Sweeney is now working on a number of projects for Sony Pictures, including this role. She enlisted in March for an unnamed part in the cast of Sony's upcoming Spider-Verse movie Madame Webb, in which she will co-star with Dakota Johnson as the title character. She also joined the cast of the upcoming movie The Registration in August and will be working on it with Sony. Based on the same named novel, Sweeney will star in and will executively produce this dystopian thriller. Sweeney has been somewhat of a Hollywood darling since exploding to stardom on the HBO hit TV shows Euphoria and The White Lotus, for which she received Emmy nods for both. She has since transformed into one of the most sought-after actors in the business. She also co-star with Simon Rex in the suspensal film National Anthem and will play the lead in the upcoming biopic Reality Winner. Sweeney has established her own production company 5050 Films in addition to performing. Through this film she's executive producing The Registration. It's unclear though if she'll make Barbarella under this label. Again if you like our content please do not forget to leave us a like and do subscribe to us if you haven't already. Barbarella. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks so very much.